Sorry about the mess, but you've got me in between a tutorial I'm doing for Quad 4A. But I thought I'd just like to show you a new tool that I use a lot these days. It's a vacuum desolder pump. Now, you may desolder in uh, many ways. Uh, what I like to do is retrieve the components of old boards and they're soldered in. Normally what I do there is if you look at my video on the vibrating tumbler I have just made an attachment plate for that that just clamps the board. I then just then heat the board up and as it's vibrating when the solder is ready to melt the parts fly off and you end up with a blank board. I use the components like the these pins, different uh, components, sometimes you may only want to spring off something, clamp, bit of copper, ferrite ring. So before you throw it away, just take off what you want. But today I'm just going to talk about this sort of pumps. Now you can use this copper braid and the way that works is you just place it on the area of the component you want to desolder, get your soldering iron, heat it up and the braid wicks up the copper. So if you're doing a lot of these components you'll be there for a long time and use a lot of the wicking. It's not ex overly expensive but you do use a lot up. So you may have bought one of these solar pumps in the past. The way they work, just like a push bike pump. In the old days when the kids used to ride push bikes you have to pump them up. But in this, there's a spring. So that then is, pushes against the plunger. There's a trigger there. That locks in the in position. Then when you want to desolder, so locked pin. When you want to desolder, you get your soldering iron, heat it up, then come over, press the trigger, and it sucks up. Now these are very cheap buck or two. Of course when I brought mine all those last century, all those years ago, it was about ten bucks. But they do have some problems. They have a Teflon tip and over the years it starts to split and deteriorate. Also the biggest problem is that they only suck in. So when you go boop, the solder is sucked in. It then fills the chamber, as you can see with the solder that's still on there. Starts to block up and you might be soldering and you want to do another one and you find that it's blocked. You then find out that it's all lumped inside the nozzle so you get yourself a bit of wire and you push and you... so it takes a bit of uh, pushing to get it out, you, you end up bending and twisting the nylon tip. So the latter models actually have a little needle in there. So when you put it back, it pushes the needle in. So the later models they've learnt. But of course, the spring gets covered in solder, the inside gets covered in solder, the plunger gets covered in solder, the O-ring gets covered in solder, and as it rubs, the rubber starts to cut, so you lose the suction and after a while it's not as efficient as what it used to be. 
So I then thought, okay, I'd seen one of these electric vacuum desolder pumps. Now I thought they were around about 20, 30 bucks, but I happened to have a win on eBay and they put it up for $5 starting bid and no one else wanted it, wanted it so I won it for $5. So you can have this for a dollar, or this for five dollars. Now, the main difference for this is, got a solenoid in there, same principle. Plunger, you press the button. There it goes. Now, I've just got that heating while that's warm out. The problem I found with With these, is that you cut your hot soldering iron, it's melted, you then go like that, you may have to put it away. So by the time you have got the heat off, that back on, you find out it's blocked, you've got to put that back in, you got to then unplug it and go back. It can be a problem. If you only use them occasionally, once, that's fine. Also, on some of the components, there was a larger contact area for the solar. So these nozzles are a bit small. These ones come with two tips and a wire poker as well. Now this is the particular model I got. I can't read Chinese, but it works quite well. But there is a couple of tips in using it. I'll just demonstrate on the one of those larger solder parts is that you need a piece of newspaper. You may ask why. And if you want to just place it, make it a bit damp a little bit of water there, just a little bit, that's even better. Now the reason why, like I said with this particular type, that's one way. This particular one, you press your finger, sucks up. And the first time you use it, you then let your finger go, it then blows all the melted solder all over your board. Or you might go like that and bam, it's all over your arm or your eye, that sort of thing. So it's not a good way to do it. So what you do is that when you desolder, it's suck it up, bring it over the bit of paper, let it go. It then sprays it out. If it's a bit damp, it then doesn't spray all over the place and bounce around. So that is a semi sort of self cleaning. You let it heat up, then and that's how quickly it's done. You've got to make sure that you don't burn your hand, your arm on the end of it. And if you just want to remove one component quickly, they're quite good. I highly recommend them if you do a bit of desoldering, uh, if you want to shift chips around, that type of thing. Five bucks, you can't beat it. Thanks for watching. <coughs>